Hello, this is Sammy. I want to welcome you to Invest in Prayer. The greatest investment that you'll make in your life is the time that you spend with the creator of the universe, the one who hung the stars in space, the one who intervenes in the affairs of human history, the one who gives purpose and direction and meaning to each of our lives. To be able to come and have communion with him, it's the most exciting thing that you will ever do. Invest in your time with him. And so I want to continue our talks. I've been talking about some things on uh, prayer and how it changes nations. I've shared with you about Romania, about East Germany, the collapse of the Berlin Wall, some extraordinary things that have taken place and some moments in which God has intervened in the affairs of the history of nations. I've also talked to you about some very personal things because prayer uh, is above everything else, very personal, it's very private. It's, it's you and God sharing your heart with him and allowing him to share his heart with you. And uh, I, we, we've talked about both of those things and I, I don't think that you can really get away from uh, and just doing one or the other because when you get to know him, you see how great he is. And so prayer is not just some kind of mystical uh, event or something that you do alone in a closet that has no impact on real living in the life that we have in this world. It, 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 it makes an incredible difference in our world that we're living in. But also prayer is very private. <laughs> so there's a balance there. You, you see the big picture and what happens in nations and how lives are transformed. And then you see the, the small picture. Well, you know, some people may be asking, well, Sammy, how does this affect America? You've talked about Romania. You've talked about Eastern Europe. You've talked about things that you've seen in those places. But, but what about the United States? I mean, what, what place, what role does prayer have? Let me just say to you that uh, maybe give you a little bit of a history lesson here and, and then bring it to where we're at today because I, I, I think that most Americans don't have any idea, don't have a clue about the role that prayer has played in this country. Actually, before America was bo born, when we were still, still part of the colonies of England, there, were some, there was a first great awakening. Most historians will talk about the, the great awakening under people like Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield. George Whitfield was an evangelist who came from England to America and preached. He preached in the colonies. He started a, an orphanage home. He, he just, God used him mightily. He would speak outdoors sometimes to 30,000 people and he had no microphone, no, no PA system. Just imagine that. That time he, he would use the, uh, the geography of the place and, and what he would do is he would speak in around hills and where the wind would blow and his voice, he had a great voice, but he, he spoke uh, publicly and, and God used him mightily. And there were places, there was one time after Whitfield spoke in Boston that Ben Franklin said he was walking down the street and there was almost every single home uh, you could find families praying together and having devotions together. Uh, there was a great move of God's spirit. There were entire communities that were awakened to God and who he is. Uh, th there was just this uh, great movement of God's spirit. Matter of fact, many historians, uh, secular historians, will say that, that uh, the strength and the unity of uh, the revolution at that time that made America a, a nation was the, the great spiritual movements, that that was the unifying factor uh, that brought people together and enabled uh, the people of, of, of this country to have the courage to stand up and say we want our own country, we want our own freedoms, we want to have our own destiny and, and, and direct our own nation. So it was, it was out of this great awakening, what, what many historians call the first great awakening. Then right after that, and the freedom came and we received our um, uh, freedom and we became a nation in and itself, then there was this uh, period of time where there was great division, there was great uh, problems, and in fact many people wondered whether the, the nation would survive, whether we would exist. There were riots in some place, places, there was great economic problems, but uh, during that time there was a pioneer movement towards the West. It was right about the time that the Louisiana Purchase took place, and, and there was a great spiritual movement that began to take place again.
there was a, a, a place in Kentucky uh, called Cane Ridge, and, and some Presbyterian ministers were meeting, and they had communion time. But leading up to the communion time, they would have these times of seeking the Lord and repentance. And God moved. God came and moved in a mighty way. And all of a sudden, people began to come from all over they, they, to this little place called Cane Ridge. It's, it's actually outside of uh, the Lexington area right now, not very far from there. If you go and visit there, it's in the Harsh country uh, there in, um, in, in Kentucky, and, and the, they still have the building that was originally there. But people would gather. I mean, 30,000 people now, they would gather outdoors, and, 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 and there was this spiritual move, and people were converted, and lives were changed, and this movement spread uh, throughout the West, and this pioneer movement. It was a great pioneer revival. And from the early 1800s to the, around the 1820s, there was this great awakening. Then it began to die down. And then in uh, 1857 and 1858, which was the last time there was a great national revival, it's called by historians the Great Prayer Revival. And there was a great movement of God's Spirit. It began actually in a, in a time very similar to the time that we have today. Uh, there was a man by the name of Jeremiah Lamphere who started a prayer meeting in the business district of New York. And he called people to pray. There were only six people who came to that first prayer meeting. But coincidentally, there was a collapse in the financial institutions at that particular time uh, that, that happened pretty much simultaneously with him calling for the prayer meeting. Well, when the financial systems collapse, all of a sudden people begin to pray and begin to seek God. And they fill this Reformed church there on Fulton Street. And people begin to come in at the noon hour. And, and it was just packed with people seeking God. Well, this spread throughout New York. And not only throughout New York, it spread to other cities throughout the United States. And, and, the, and all over the country, there was this great movement of God's Spirit. There was this great awakening that took place. And... Um, it was directly tied to what was happening financially within the country. And it was, it's, it's very interesting because it's so close and it parallels so much with what's going on today. And that's one of the reasons that I am so excited about at this particular time uh, having this blog on Invest in Prayer because I believe God is wanting to do something and um, it, it's tied to what, what's happening in our world, in our country, at this very moment with the whole financial institutions being in jeopardy with a lot of things that are going on, I believe that we, we desperately need a prayer movement. We desperately need personally, privately, to invest in prayer in our own lives, and then secondly, to invest in prayer in our nation. And if we will do that, there is no limit to what God can do. Uh, we can see great things take place. Uh, I believe that we, we could be on the verge of a great revival. God could use this. I'm not saying that it's going to happen or that it has to happen. I'm just saying that there are a lot of things today uh, that's taking place financially that, that looked just like what was happening in the uh, 1857s, 58. It's been over 150 years since we've had a major awakening. Now, we have had some minor movements of God's Spirit. I think the last one was at Asbury College in um, the 1970s where there was a, an outpouring of God's Spirit and it spread to other college campuses. That was initiated by a prayer movement. Perhaps I'll take one of these sessions and talk about that. And uh, historically speaking, uh, when you see God's people pray, things change. And, and that's the only point I want to make right now is that that in this country, not only in Romania uh, and not only in East Germany and the collapse of the Berlin Wall, was there this great prayer movement that sort of preceded that. But in our country, uh, before the birth of our nation here in the United States, there was a great prayer movement that took place. And so I, I really believe that we're at this critical juncture in history and God is calling people to pray as we've never prayed before because 
God can do great things, and I believe he's wanting to do great things in this nation, but it must begin with a prayer movement. So I want to encourage you. Maybe you have some friends. Maybe just start meeting with them and pray. I don't know what your personal private prayer life is like, but find a place, a time where you meet with God and God meets with you. God will do extraordinary things. He's done it in Romania. He's done it in Eastern Europe. He's done it in East Berlin. He's done it in America. And what he's done in the past, he will do today. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's look to him. Let's pray. Let's seek God's face in a fresh way in this generation.